If there is one thing that will make your videos look really, really professional, it is most definitely gonna be if you have those buttery smooth shots in your videos. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get smooth footage. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do if you want to get really smooth footage. And uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is definitely going to be one of those obvious things, but it's going to be gimbals and sliders. Using a gimbal will give you some really smooth footage without you having to think about that many things else more than just operating a gimbal to get the perfect shot. And then we also have sliders that can give you those really nice sliding shots that you usually see in documentaries. Then they usually put the camera on a motorized slider and then like goes like that and it feels, it looks so cool. But a gimbal or a slider is something that a lot of people out there cannot afford or don't want to invest in when they just bought their first super expensive camera. So if we leave those things aside, there's still a couple of things that you can do to get those buttery smooth shots using nothing but your camera, basically. So depending on what kind of camera that you have, there's probably gonna be a couple of different options that you can choose from when you are choosing your frame rate. And for example, I'm shooting with the Sony a7 III and it has the option to shoot in 120 frames per second. One of the biggest reasons as to why I'm shooting in 100 or 120 frames per second is to make sure that I can slow the footage down if I need to when I'm getting into the editing process because sometimes you can't like rely on the 25 frames per second to actually get your shot. And by shooting in 120 frames per second, that means that you can slow the footage down five times slower than you actually shot the footage. And that is something that is so good when you try to get a sequence together and you realize that you don't really have enough footage, but then you can just stretch some parts out because that will give you like a longer sequence. And when you do that, your shots will look way more smoother than when you actually shot them. And the reason for that is because the movement that you did is being slowed down five times. So when you move the camera, it's gonna be a really slow movement and all those like micro movements that you do with your hands are gonna be gone. When you are shooting footage handheld with your camera, you wanna to try to consider yourself as a single unit. You are fused together with your camera because if your camera moves, then you are moving. So you're not gonna move around like this because that will not give you any steady shots. But if you move like this, it's gonna give you some really, really smooth looking shots. It looks deserted, but it's actually not like there's a road going right there. So say for example that your camera has the option to shoot in 30 frames per second, or maybe like 60 frames per second, there's something that you can add that is gonna be called a warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro, and just stabilization in Final Cut Pro. And if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, for example, then you also wanna make sure they slow that down as much as you can to make sure that your footage is looking really, really smooth. For example, these shots are shot in 30 frames per second in 4K, and then I slowed those down to 75% when I got into Final Cut Pro. And like, while it doesn't slow it down to give you that really slow mo -y look, it does make your footage look like a little bit better than it actually did when you got the shot. For the intro sequence of this video, I shot everything in 100 frames per second just to be able to slow that down and make sure that I got the sequence that I wanted to have in the video. But for, to prove my point right now, I'm gonna shoot in 25 frames per second to show you what kind of a difference it does to actually move with the camera. Say that I wanna have a shot of the camera like going into the window like that. If I just move the camera like that, it's not gonna be steady and it's not gonna look good when we get into the editing process. But what we wanna do is to like move with the camera into the window and then at the very end, like reach in with your arms. So when you are moving with the camera, you don't wanna move much because the more you move, the more shake is going to be introduced into your footage. When you're doing some kind of like panning motion or something like that, then you wanna to try to be as smooth as possible and just like lean forward and back 
with the camera and same goes for if you want to do like some zooming in like that then you just want to like lean forward towards your subject because that will make your footage look so much more steadier than if you do like this another thing you can think of is that when you want to like spice up your camera movement a little bit then you can also like try to introduce some twisting to your camera because that is gonna allow you to hide some of the camera shake because of the extra motion that is introduced into the camera movement and if you're shooting in manual focus then that is gonna look even better because like when the focus follows along when you are turning it's gonna look really really good let me show you so the first thing you want to do is making sure that you have your camera set to manual focus otherwise it's like it's gonna work but it's not gonna look as good and i'm gonna set the focus for the things that are inside the house so that when we move out these things off the window is going to look really blurred out and it's going to look really good. And again, you want to make sure that you are moving your whole body and not moving just your arms. It's going to look shaky. So we want to make it look smooth. So uh, move the whole body. Va? Move my body. Move my body. And then we can start in here. We're going to have the camera at an angle. And then we want to move out with our whole body. Ugh. What do you think? I think it looks really cool. And the cool thing is that when you're shooting any kind of subject, then you can just follow your subject with that same movement that the subject is doing. This is something that I did when I was shooting the woodworker B-roll. When he picked up his saw from behind, I followed his movement down like that. And that kind of hid some of the camera shakes that I did in that particular movement. Another thing that will make a huge difference when you want to have those really smooth shots is definitely going to be if you're shooting wide with a wide angle lens. For example, when I'm shooting my vlogs, I always go with the 16 35 lens because I want to shoot most of my vlogs at 16 millimeter. And when you do that, it's going to give you this really steady shot than if you were to use a lens that is zoomed in. So if you're going to shoot videos with a wide angle lens, then you want to try to make sure that you have a lens with a wide aperture. And the reason for that is because it's going to give you a more like blurred out background and it's going to let in so much light to the camera sensor. But the downside with that is that those lenses are usually really expensive. But what you can do then is that you can go up to a 50 millimeter or a 85 millimeter even. But when you go up to those longer focal lengths you want to make sure that you have a optical steady st optically stabilized lens to remove all those like jitters that come with the longer focal lengths because as i said you know when you are wide it's not going to be as apparent that you're actually like holding your camera and maybe doing some slight moves but when you go up it's going to be really apparent so that is why you want to have that built-in steady shot into the lens another thing that i think helps a lot as well is definitely having the built-in stabilization into the camera sensor so what that means is that the sensor is like stabilized within the camera body and it basically like moves the sensor on all different axes when you are moving the camera and that helps a lot to get way more smoother footage even though your lens is not optically stabilized another thing that can help you to get those really smooth shots is to exhale when you're moving towards your subject when you're trying to get the shot because if you exhale then uh, you don't get the <laughs> like that so whenever i try to get the shot i'm like <sighs> blowing out the air and then moving my body towards the subject or from the subject that matter if i'm like right here then i'm like <sighs> And it's gonna make it look way smoother. So if you pair up a camera with the built-in stabilization on the sensor and then have a lens with the optical steady shot, then that is gonna be an epic combo to get those really smooth looking shots. Now, I want you to venture out into the world, get some really smooth looking shots with your newfound skills and practice the different things that I taught you in this video because I mean like that is how you get better at things, right? So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. I would love to hear what your favorite camera move is that you always pull off when you get to an epic location. Drop a comment below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. So thank you so much for that. And if you haven't subscribed, I'm going to say it right here. This is uh, cool. Huh?
Ja. I will see you in the next video.